So this is the first video in chapter 16, which is focused on primate evolution. What we'll eventually build to as we work our way through this chapter is discussing where humans came from, how modern humans evolved from higher level primates. But in order to understand that, we have to first talk about some general characteristics that all primates share. So we'll go through a couple of things here and we'll see how all modern primates like, have certain characteristics in common and we'll discuss maybe how some of the traits in those groups have changed throughout time. Uh, but the first one to talk about is arguably the most important. This is the idea of an opposable first digit. So if you look down at your hand, your three, uh, your uh, four main fingers, so your index finger, your middle finger, your ring finger, and your pinky finger, they are all opposing of your thumb, like they're on the opposite side of your hand. The reason this is important is we can use the thumb on the opposite side of the other fingers for different kinds of tasks. Uh, for starters, one of the factors here is that the thumb can be used for a very powerful grip. If it's set up on the other side of our fingers, and you think about squeezing something very tightly, if you're holding onto a baseball bat while you're swinging it, something like that, that would allow you to have a lot of power in your hands. We can also uh, have a lot of dexterity, use a very precision-based uh, grip if you're using the thumb in opposition to the other fingers. So this could be something as simple as writing with a pencil. If you're able to use your thumb, you can imagine trying to do that without the use of your thumb on the other side of your fingers, it would be extremely difficult. So primates are very unique in the sense of that opposable thumb making us separate from a lot of other species on the planet. Uh, another thing that you may have never considered is the idea of what's called binocular vision. So if you think about binoculars, where the two lenses are on either side of each other, that's basically how the eye socket is set up in primates. Uh, the eyes are set deep in the skull and they're on the front of the face. What this does is it allows our fields of view to overlap, which I'll use, which I'll explain to you uh, using that picture in a minute. But this does two good things for us. Uh, it gives us good depth perception, and it makes us a good judge of distance, like telling how far away something is. So not everything works the same way that primates do. If we take a second to analyze this picture, you can see that in primates, both of the eyes are set in the front of the head, whereas on a lot of other species, the eyes are kind of set on either side of the head. So if we take a look down here, this will explain what that does for us. There's a section of your field of view where what you're seeing out of your right eye and what you're seeing out of your left eye overlap. What that does is it provides us with depth perception. Uh, people who have lost vision in one of their eyes can usually compensate for this a little bit, but their depth perception is going to be inhibited compared to somebody who has two eyes and like true binocular vision. Uh, what we see out of what we call like the corner of our eye, that's our monocular vision, meaning like only one of your eyes are seeing that. Uh, generally, we're good at detecting like quick motion and things like that in those areas, but our depth perception and our perception of um, like distances is very much limited. The other thing to notice, this is what we give up. We have a tremendous blind spot behind us where we can't see. So if we're thinking about other species, we're comparing the uh, primates here to a rabbit. The rabbits have a very small area where they have binocular vision, where the view from their right and left eye overlap. But if you're looking at this, their monocular vision is huge. They can almost see all the way around them. So this is beneficial for a species like the rabbit that's a prey species where it has to avoid a predator. But for something like the primates, where they have different strategies to avoid predation. They're not relying so much on vision. Uh, generally, primates travel more in groups, and they use like the, the group or like troop protection in order to um, sort of prevent predation. But uh, the advantage to our eyes being set up the way they are is that we're very, very good at judging distance and, um, and also this idea of depth, which becomes very helpful when it comes to humans using simple tools or other primates uh, using simple tools for uh, tasks like hunting and things like that, which we'll talk about as we move forward and as this chapter develops a little bit more. Uh, some other things that we'll talk about, and these we won't get into in quite as much detail as we were looking at before, uh, but is the idea of a diurnal type structure for um, when the species are awake and asleep. What diurnal means is that the species is active during the day and they're sleeping at night. 
Uh, generally, the primate species that follow this pattern have color vision because they're up during the day when they can take advantage of that. So we'll see that not all primates uh, see colors. The ones that are nocturnal, the ones that are um, awake just at night and then asleep during the day, they generally only see in black and white. Um, now humans, since we're set up for a normal diurnal pattern where we're up during the day, we have normal color vision. Another one that we'll look at is the idea of having a complex brain. So the uh, structures in our brains are set up for memory, problem solving, and social behavior in ways that we're not seeing um, other species structured this way. Uh, another thing that primates' brains are very good at is recognition of facial features. A lot of primate communication has to do with recognizing ex um, expressions on other primates' faces. So it could be an expression for aggression, um, all kinds of things that are being uh, portrayed on the face. Our complex brains allow us to interpret that information, but more than anything, it's the, uh, the problem solving and the social development that really sets us apart from other species. That will become extremely important as we work our way through some of the evidence this chapter. Uh, the last one is a physical thing. It's the idea of locomotion. Uh, we see that primates have especially flexible joints. Uh, we see this in a lot of like lower level primates where like their shoulders and their hips are very flexible. And as far as the actual mode of locomotion goes, they're usually either walking on two or four limbs. Uh, there are some species that actually go back and forth. You think of like chimpanzees. Uh, they sometimes move on four limbs. They sometimes move on two. Humans are the only group of primates that exclusively move on two limbs. Uh, the last couple things we'll talk about have to do with, uh, for starters, uh, reproduction rate. Uh, the reproductive rate is one of the reasons that primates take so long to adapt and evolve over time because the reproduction rate is low. Um, this is due to a long pregnancy and then a high demand for parental care once the offspring are born. So if you remember, uh, the species that adapt and evolve the quickest are things that have a quick reproduction rate and they're things that are relatively simple genetically. Primates are complex genetically and have a slow reproductive rate. So we're seeing very, very slow instances of evolution in these groups. Um, a term that we're going to use in a second when we go through some of the primate groups is the idea of a prehensile tail. Uh, a tail like this will be used almost like a fifth limb. It can be used for like uh, grasping tree limbs and things like that. Uh, an example of this would be in spider monkeys. And we'll go through some different primate groups in a minute, but you can see how that spider monkey is using its tail to hold on to this tree limb back here. And uh, that's an example of the, one of the ways primates take advantage of their tails. Because as we'll see in a second, there's different primate groups, and each one uses the tail a little bit differently. Um, the last major term for us to talk about is the idea of hominins. This is the subgroup of the great apes which people belong to. Uh, it turns out we're the only species of hominins left although we're not the only species of hominins to exist. There's actually fossil evidence for a substantial number of other hominin species, and we'll take some time this chapter to go through and actually examine some of that evidence and look at some of those other groups. Um, the last thing for us to talk about are some of the different primate groups. So this uh, fits well with our mention of the hominin groups. But if we go through some of these, we'll actually start looking at the ones that are like the, uh, the most basic, the ones that evolved the longest ago, and then we'll eventually work up to modern day people. But we have, we'll get this centered for you. Um, the Strepsirenes, these are relatively small monkeys. Uh, they have really, really big eyes. They're generally nocturnal, which is why their eyes are so big. And these are resembling some of the earliest primates to ever evolve. So these are relatively simplistic. Um, they only live in certain parts of the world. We'll go through some evidence for these later on, but if you're familiar with like the Loris, that's a good example of one of the groups from the Strepsirenes category. Uh, the next one we'll take a look at are referred to as the New World monkeys. They have very long tails, as you can see here, and then many have those prehensile tails we were just talking about where they end up using that tail to grasp things, like the spider monkey, for example. 
Um, the old world monkeys, they look somewhat like the new world monkeys, but they lack that prehensile tail. Some of them have reduced tails, so if you think of something like a baboon, uh, that would be in this category of the old world monkeys. Um, the Asian apes have long arms. They're things that live in like the, the rainforest. You think of like an orangutan. They've got extremely long arms. They're living up in the trees. Uh, an important thing with apes, and people get this wrong all the time, uh, the difference between apes and monkeys, apes lack a tail, whereas monkeys have a tail. Oftentimes, people try to use those terms interchangeably, and, uh, and that simply isn't correct. Um, the next one for us to talk about are the African apes. These guys usually live in family groups, and they have extremely complex social behavior. Like we were talking about before, the complex brains allow these species to interact that way, and allows them to interpret like the facial features and other social cues from individuals in the group. Uh, gorillas, obviously, are a very good example of this one. The last group are humans. Right, Our scientific name is Homo sapiens. The only living species from the hominin group, as I mentioned to you before, and we're the only one that possesses the ability to walk on two legs for long distances. So remember, there are things like chimps that will walk on two legs. There's other uh, varieties of monkeys that do do that for a short period of time, but humans are the only ones to exclusively uh, walk on two limbs for a long period of time. So that's just a basic introduction to a couple of the different primate groups. Try to keep these characteristics in mind. They're going to be important as we work our way through this chapter and compile some evidence for where modern people have come from. So as always, guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Make sure you answer the questions at the end of the video.